The market for compact SUVs is growing and growing and growing. And this is one reason why a lot of manufacturers present their e-cars as a compact SUV at first. And this is the same with Kia. After the Kia Niro Hybrid and the plug-in hybrid, they now present the third uh, electrified version of this car, the so-called e-Nero. This is the car we're going to drive today and we're going to find out how it drives, what else can it deliver and more important, will it really reach more than 450 kilometers of maximum range? The design of the Kia e-Nero is not so different to his brother and sister models, but there are some bits and pieces I'm going to explain now. First thing, we do have this closed grille here, which is typical for electric cars. And we do have this where you can recharge your e-Nero. Um, another difference is this blue part down here at the air intake. And you're going to find these blue elements here at the daytime running lights as well. Important is the car comes as standard with alloy headlamps, which I think is a bit quirky because this is an electric car. But from the second trim level onwards, you can order LED headlamps as well. From the side, the Kia e Nero is not different than all the other Kia Nero models. Very important here with the cars, it comes as standard on 17 inch alloy wheels. But the rest of the car looks like the typical compact crossover. We do have these claddings around the wheel arches and we do have a bit more of ground clearance. At the rear of the car, we do find again these blue applications here and there, which we already know from the front and of course we have the same color here at the Echo Electric sign which definitely say this is an electric car. The rest of the car looks as the standard Nero but important is the car features LED um, taillights and they have the same light signature as the hybrid versions of the Nero. As an electric car, the Kia e Nero provides you with four different drive modes. We do have Echo Plus, Echo, Comfort and Sport. And if you change the drive modes, really something changes inside of the car. So for instance, if you use Sport, that really makes the car more sharp, more crisp. You have a different steering, different brake and different gas pedal. And only in this uh, mode, you will reach the top speed of 167 kilometers per hour. If you change, for instance, into the Echo mode, the car does a lot to make the car more sufficient and if you for instance then change into echo plus that really changes everything because then for instance the car will switch off the climber control from time to time just to squeeze out the everything it can squeeze out of the energy you've just having on board the kia e nero comes quite well equipped so even the base model of the car is featuring a adaptive cruise control with a traffic jam assist it also is featuring a climate system and you do have a seven inch touchscreen here at the center console you can have eight inch but then you have to pay extra um, and you do have this digital cockpit here it looks a bit like standard uh, standard round clusters but it is not these are full digital screens and they really provide you with all the information you need while driving the car the materials and the craftsmanship inside of the Kia Nero, I think they are very, very nice. You do have loads of soft touch like up here, but of course you do have some of the plastic stuff like down here. But I think more important is that it all looks very nice and it doesn't make any scratchy sounds. And what I really like is that you can't just with your eye say this is soft touch or this is plastic. It all looks the same, so all I think on a very high level. There are two different powertrains available for the new Kia e Nero. The smaller one is a 100 kilowatt engine combined with a 39.2 kilowatt hour battery. The bigger one, the car we are driving, is a 150 kilowatt um, engine combined with a 64 kilowatt hour battery. Kia says the car should have a range fully charged from 455 kilometers with an average drive. And important, there is a so-called city cycle they offer, and then the car should do more than 600 kilometers. The smaller version with a smaller battery only offers a little less than 300 kilometers. Our Kia e Nero is featuring the more powerful version of a powertrain. That means we do have 150 kilowatts or 204 horsepower on board, and that is combined with 395 newton meters of torque. And with this, inside of this small car, you can really drive the car from very easy and smooth up to really quite sporty. 
and the limitation of sportiness in this car comes a bit more from the suspension and the let's say quite small wheels instead of the powertrain. Our Kia e-Niro should take 15.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer driven. We will see where we're going to end at the end of the day but actually we're having a consumption of about 16.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer driven. With a boot capacity of 451 litres with the rear seats up, the Kia e-Niro offers 15 litres more than the hybrid version of the car. Very important is we do have a completely flat ground here and this is because the car was from the beginning planned as an e-car as well. If you fold down the rear seats, that uh, boot capacity increases up to 1,405 litres and I think this is for a compact SUV an absolutely acceptable number. The space the Kia e-Niro offers here at the front seats is, I think, more than sufficient. So even me as a tall person, I sit very nice and comfortably here. I do have enough heft hat space, but it is at the end of the line, let's say. So I w it's not, not good if I would be just one centimeter longer. But this is, I think, because of the sunroof. So if you're a tall person, you want to buy one of these cars, you should better try to buy that one without the glass roof, because that gives you the extra bit that you need. But on the other hand, I sit very comfortably, I can adjust the steering wheel the way I want, so I can really have the car under nice control. So I think even for tall persons, it's very nice. And if there's enough space behind me, we're going to find out that by having a short stop. So now let's see how much space there really is behind me. I didn't change my seating position. Let's try. So, first thing, I do fit in. So I have enough leg room left. I do have, yeah, some headroom, but not very much. But important is the e-Niro features a bit less space here at the rear bench than the standard combustion cars do. Uh, this is, of course, because of the battery. Um, so that means my knees are quite high which means my legs are not really uh, on the bench. But I think for an electric compact SUV, this is more than sufficient space. That was my first test drive in the new Kia e-Niro. And what I really like with the car is that only at the second look, you will realize this is an electric car and the car offers more than enough space and it drives really well. And very important regarding to the consumption is you can really reach what Kia says more than 450 kilometers because we drove now about 200 kilometers without thinking about consumption and at the end of the day our average was less than what Kia's data says so what I don't like so much with the car is the car has so much power that if you really drive it sporty it sometimes feels like this is too much for this crossover so i would love to see that powertrain in a kia c because i think with that car then you will have double the fun on the mountain roads here in france